right, hello everyone and welcome to the night around the clock. Right now our panel is from college to career, Newman Sport Management alumni, and we have so many great panelists with us today. And um, real quick, just wanted to thank them for coming out and thank all of you for coming out and tuning in and joining us as well. So the panelists are gonna introduce themselves, but first I just wanted to tell all of you that if any of you joining in have any questions, you can put them in the chat box and we will get to them at some point throughout our panel. So we're gonna start out with Courtney. Hi everyone, um, thanks so much NU460 for having us. My name's Courtney Curcio. I graduated in 2018 from Newman with sports management and a minor in marketing. And I am currently a foundation coordinator for PGA Reach Philadelphia, which is the 501C for the Philadelphia PGA section. All right, now we're heading over to Julia. Hi, um, hi everyone. My name is Julia Malseed. Um, I graduated in 2016 with um, sport and entertainment management major and also a minor in marketing. Um, I went to work for the Philadelphia Union as a fan service representative, um, then went over to coach volleyball at the University of Penn. And now I'm back at um, the Philadelphia Union as a senior fan service representative. So thanks for coming. Awesome. So now we have Marissa up next. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Um, I My name is Marissa Maglino. I graduated last year from Newman University, um, 2020. Graduated with a bachelor's degree in sport management and then a minor in marketing and business administration. Um, I am currently still at Newman in the grad program working towards my master's degree for sport business. And I am currently a youth account manager for Perfect Game Baseball. Great, now next is Matt Lawson. Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, Matt Lawson here. Graduated 2018 from Newman with a bachelor's in sport management. Currently working for Philadelphia Parks and Recreation as a recreation leader. And last but not least, we have Tom Van Horn. Uh, hey guys, uh, my name is Tom Van Horn. I graduated in well, actually last year uh, in May of 2020. Uh, with a bachelor's degree in sports management. Uh, I'm currently an account executive at Choice Sports Cards. Awesome. So we're going to head into our moderated questions now. And my first question is, why did you guys pick sport management as your major? And we're going to start out with Julia. W one second, Taylor. Am I not in this? Oh, Can anybody hear no, me? I didn't see you. Oh, it's okay. all good. I'm like, I'm like, oh god, that's so not like RSVP for something. I thought, it, no, no, it's okay. I thought it was me. Uh, just make it quick. I'm Darian. I graduated uh, 2018 with a bachelor's in sports management. Uh, I currently work for the Philadelphia Eagles as a conversion coordinator in the stadium operations department, and I'm happy to be here with you guys today. And I'm sorry about that. All good. <laughs> just wanted to make sure I was in here. <laughs> all right. Awesome. So. Again, just real quick, the first question is, why did you guys pick sport management as your major? And we're going to start off, like I said, with Julia. Um, so this is a really good question. Uh, for almost the first two years that I was at Newman, I was just so confused. I did not know what I wanted to do. I had a bunch of things that were like in my mind that I was interested in. Um, and talking to different people at Newman definitely helped me. But it all just kept coming back to like, I loved sports and I had such a passion for sports. Um, I was an athlete and I was just always around it, such a big part of my life. And I think a lot of people maybe grow up thinking, you know, I know I want to be a teacher. I know I want to be a nurse. Um, and I, I didn't have that other than just knowing that I love sports. So um, I went with it and I mean, I, I couldn't be happier. I think um, so many people tell you, you need to, you need to follow your passion in life. And, uh, and so it was a good choice for me because it's something that I'm super, super passionate about. So that's how I ended up in sport management. 
That's awesome. I can definitely relate to that. How about we have Darian next? Because I neglected him the last time. <laughs> it's all good, Taylor. Um, so for me, when I first got to Newman, I uh, was an athletic training um, major. I originally wanted, I ri originally wanted to be a physical therapist, um, but due to a couple of you know financial troubles, uh, I had to take a few semesters off. If I would have stayed in athletic training, I probably wouldn't have graduated until this year. Uh, so I had to think about you know another you know major for myself. And to what Julia said, I you know I love sports, so I wanted to stay kind of in that. Uh, I guess that, you know, area in that world. Uh, and I had a, one of my best friends, Tyreek Armstrong Wright, who was also uh, a graduate of the program. You know, I was talking to him and he just told me, you know, S, you know SM is for you, it's perfect for you. Um, and he was right, you know, it was the best decision I've ever made in my life, honestly, outside of my, fian uh, you know, and proposing to my now fiance, but, um, yeah, it's it's been great. Uh, as soon as as soon as I changed majors, went to talk to Dr. Lanzillo. Uh, you know, she caught me up with things. Next thing, next step was talking to Caleb, and the rest is history. You know, so it's definitely like I said, one of the so far second best decision of my life. Awesome. All right, up next we have Courtney. Um, for me, I liked the unpredictableness of sports and not doing the same thing over and over again every single day. So that's kind of what led me to not sitting behind a desk and wanting to do something just different. And Newman had sports management. I didn't really know what it was until that first class. So I kind of went in blindly and thought sports cool unpredictable and i played it my whole life so i was definitely in shock when i attended that first intro class but it was one of the best decisions that i made uh coming to newman and going and majoring in sports management i totally can understand that on a personal level um how about tom next so um, Dr. Lanzillo, my senior year in high school, actually spoke to my high school, um, to my, I was taking a sport management class my senior year. Uh, she came and spoke to that. Uh, when I was applying for colleges, I was choosing actually between sport management and criminal justice. Then I decided I didn't want to be a cop. So I chose sport management and stuck with it. And it's been a great decision ever since. Now we have Marissa. Yeah, similar to what everyone else has been um, saying, I just always had a love for sports and I knew I wanted to do something that I truly like had a passion for and that I would always like doing. Um, and then once I started doing some research and saw that sport management was like up and running and it was like the new thing, I was like, did some research and it was perfect because I always wanted to work in like the business side of things. And then I always had a passion for sports as well. So it kind of just was the perfect fit. And like everyone else said, I haven't regretted it since it was the best decision. Oh yeah. Now we have Matt. Yeah. So uh, not to sound repetitive, but just like everyone else, uh, I've always loved sports. I actually started like Darian as an athletic training major. Uh, shortly after my freshman, sophomore year, I realized that wasn't for me. Uh, contemplated a lot of things, thought about maybe even dropping out. And then Courtney actually introduced me to the program, told me to come out to dinner with the sport management club. And I heard free drinks and free food. And I was like, all right, let's check this out. Uh, met with Dr. J a week later. Uh, funny enough, I wanted to be a sports agent. She shot that down real quick. And I really appreciate her doing that because I soon learned why that wasn't possible. Uh, and then I just, like everyone else said, I fell in love with sports, loved being around sports and never looked back and so happy I made that jump. Awesome. All right. So we're going to turn our second question over to one of my co-hosts, Tommy Doherty. Graduates, how are you guys doing? Um, so this question is more aimed towards uh, the attendees that might not be where we are yet. Uh, they're probably freshmen, sophomore, juniors, but what translated from sports management classes at Newman the most for you when you went into the real world? Um, if uh, Tom, you want to start this one off, uh, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. 
Um, probably the biggest thing is sport management classes at Newman were really set up like a business. So you know how, you know, most classes you have a teacher reading off a PowerPoint classes weren't like that. Uh, I learned how to sell in class. I learned how to do business in class. I learned how to be professional in class. And, you know, that really goes a long way that I kind of had a head start. Some people, you know, at other schools don't learn that stuff until they actually get thrown into the, uh, into the real world. So, um, we just kind of got a head start and we kind of learned professionalism as a, at a young age. And it really shown, um, really showed off in internships and other opportunities. Uh, we learned how to network. Um, we, we learned how to, I learned how to network first semester of my freshman year, Caleb Mezzi's, uh, first class. Uh, you had to do it for a project. And, you know, I still use some of those techniques today, you know, trying to sell to clients. Julia, do you want to throw your input in? Yeah, sure. Um, a little bit similar, but I think like one, one area that has really translated from college to career is um, always continue to have like a learning mindset. Always be curious, always ask questions. Um, I know like when I met Dr. J, I was so intimidated because she was constantly just nudging us to go talk, go ask, go do this, go do that. And it was so uncomfortable, um, at the time, but now it definitely has paid off. Um, and now I see myself in the workplace asking those questions that I would have never, you know, had the confidence to ask or talking to someone new or in a different department. So I think just always like be ready to learn, always want to learn um, about areas that are outside where you're at. That's definitely something that has, um, that's translated for me. Courtney, love to hear your input. Um, for me, it was those big projects at the end of the year or those group projects that we had to work on. You're always working with other people and learning to work with other people and their different work ethics and um, just getting things done at different timing. I think group projects were the biggest thing that helped me from going from Newman into the real world in classes. And regardless of what the class was, um, I know that in my sports sales or business sales or something like that, I brought that into something at the PGA and they loved the idea from it. And that was all from a group project and everyone's input. So I would say that those group projects are dreadful and I know waiting to the last minute, they're terrible. They really do help in the long run and um, they look great on resumes. So I think that's what I took with me the most. We'll swing it over to Marissa and then Darian and Matt, please. Um, yeah, what everyone else said so far, I was gonna say the same thing. Um, what makes Newman sport management classes different is like what Tom said, like it's literally like you're working in it with a company like the entire time. Um, straight from the beginning, like we're told exactly like what to expect. Like it's nothing, it's completely reality is what basically what we were like always told. And it's really is true. Like we were always told like the, what to exactly expect. And it wasn't no like fantasy, like drawn up, like it wasn't anything like that. It was, we always were told what to expect um, professionally. And that is exactly how like the real world is. And um, what Courtney said too, like teamwork, like it goes a really long way. Those projects are like dreadful at times, but that's, you're going to be doing that your entire life. So it actually definitely is helpful. Yeah, I would have to agree. Um, when I first, like if I was, if I was 19 or 18 or 19, when I first got into the program, there's no way I would have been able to take what Dr. Lanzillo and, you know, Caleb, the, the tough love you were talking about. Like I would, there's no way I would be able to take that. Like, thank goodness I was 21 when I got in and understood a little better. Uh, what they were, you know, the message they were trying to get across because it is tough love and in the business, you know, it is tough love. You, nobody's going to sugarcoat anything for you. Nobody's going to babysit you. You just have to get in and try to adapt. And uh, that's why for me, the, the 460 class was, it was a real big eye opener because um, I was already doing my full-time internship with the Eagles 
as I was, you know, in that class. And to be completely honest with you guys, I was not taking, you know, class series like classes serious at that point because kind of had an idea I was gonna get a full time job and just like I slacked off. But Dr. J, she told me about myself. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't getting like rewarded for half. Excuse my language, half assing it. Um, you know, if I was a couple of minutes late getting to the class, you know, you get docked for that, just like you would in a real job. You slack off in what your responsibility is and your role in the class, you get docked for that. Same thing and same thing like in the real world. So that's to me, that's what like separates Newman because everything you're like everybody said it. So I sound like a broken record, but everything you learned in a class trans literally translate to the professional world. So uh yeah new the, the program is just awesome yeah kind of just to echo what everyone else has said uh the class is being like a business in particular 460 uh you know everyone had their specific job title but you also you know you helped out with the general goal of putting on your your, your event at the end of the year in parks and recreation sometimes you wear five different hats at once you're the caretaker you're the man doing paperwork or woman doing paperwork and you're the person out there coaching a little league baseball game. So you have to learn that just because something's not in your job title doesn't mean that it's not something you'll be doing in your career. And I think 460 really kind of emphasized on that. And then I think uh, facility and event management, learning how to re -multi reuse uh, spaces or multi-use spaces, you know, just because something's a gym for basketball doesn't mean it can't also serve as a, Audio auditorium for gymnastics or for a concert. So just learning how to reuse spaces for multiple purposes. So for the next question that we had was after being in the sports business world, what was something you have heard from guest speakers or professors that holds true like to you guys that you got over the years? And uh, I would start with Marissa. Yeah, um, there's two things that I think really like stuck out to me that like all guest speakers touch on. And it's so true. Um, one being how important networking is. We've heard that from the jump start. Like it really is everything. Like it's the key to everything. Um, you never stop networking, no matter how old you are, no matter how far you are in the industry. You just always network. Um and then another thing, which kind of goes hand in hand, but like the sport industry really is like family. Like it's so small. It's like such a big industry, but so small, like everyone knows everybody. So like you could be at an internship and it could be in a field that you really have no interest, like even pursuing in the future, but you could be working next to someone who has a great connection in like the sport or the field that you do like want to be in. So like, it really is a small industry and like everyone seems to know everybody. And that seems to hold true. And like, our careers as well, so. Darian, your input? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I was, I actually remember um, the conversation I had with this gentleman, his, his name was Ron, jo oh, sorry, Rob Johnson. He worked for the Flyers at the time in their sports marketing department. But uh, he told me, like he just basically said, you know, it's long hours and not a lot of money. Right. And uh, that's true to this day. Um, you know, there's obviously working in football, you know, like my, my the fall, the fall and the winter months for me, like you don't you don't get breaks. There's no you don't get weekends off. If you do, you get a, maybe one day, maybe Saturday, maybe Sunday. Your summers are full. Um, so it's just a constant grind. Um, you can't get I guess you can't get down on yourself or too discouraged, obviously um you know with the money aspect because you know you just got to remember if you keep grinding and you know putting in the work you'll eventually get to where you want to get but uh yeah that was the one thing that was the one thing from a guest speaker that i took that still remains with me to this day but it you know it helped prepare my mind for what the real world was going to give to me yeah yeah i totally agree with, especially with dr j and kayla bringing on a lot of those guest speakers um to help us understand more about the sports industry um, Courtney, you're in. Uh, for me, there was two things. One specifically that I remember was someone in our class was wearing, I don't remember who the guest speaker was, but I remember specifically this moment 
someone was wearing a hoodie in the class um, and then someone else was just dressed professionally and the guy really called him out for it and said, um, you're just not dressed the part. And your first impression of somebody is huge and they're gonna remember you what you're wearing. Um, so I would stand out if, if you can wear a bright red shirt, wear a bright red shirt, as long as it looks professional, any way for you to stand out in that classroom afterwards is huge because people are really busy and, um, you have to, you have to stand out somehow. And, and that is how you dress and people don't take you seriously, especially in the golf industry. Um, if you're wearing jeans and a hoodie, you have to dress the part. That's the only way that someone's going to take you seriously and respect you really in, in the, in the sports industry as a whole. And then the second thing was also, um, pay and, uh, knowing going into it that you're not going to get paid at first, that $60,000, $80,000 job, you might, if you went in defiance or accounting, but you're in sports, so you kind of have to take what you can get and get that experience and get what you can on your resume in the beginning and the money will come. Don't worry. Um, but you need that experience. And uh, I would say in internships as well, don't ex take any opportunity you can and don't expect the pay. The pay is a reward, um, but the experience is what is going to get to you and land you that job in the future. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Um, Matt, let's get your input on this. Yeah, uh, everything Courtney and everyone else just said is Sunday, you know, and, and Parks and Rec at a playground every day. So it's kind of hard to just stand out. You know, you got a lot of rec leaders, ball shorts to the rec every day. And sure, that's acceptable, but at the end of the day, how's that parent walking up to sign their kid up for summer camp going to recognize you from someone that's just at the playground hanging out? So just uh, stand out. Take every opportunity you can to learn. Go to these panels like the one you're on now. Go to networking events. Go to every possible opportunity you can to learn. It's too good or too small for you to go to. And, um, yeah, just – Network, 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 and network. Tom? I'm going to say the biggest thing, which probably a dozen people in the sports industry told me before I graduated, was you're going to need sales experience for no matter what job you're going to have. I was a person that, would, that refused to be in sales. Like, I hated it. I didn't want to do it. I would have do, done anything not to do it. And here I am a year, I don't know, a couple of years later with a sales job. So I went from refusing to be in sales to being on a Zoom call with the executives of the Kentucky Derby and Major League Fishing, trying to convince them to do trading cards. Um, it's not even just a sales job. You know, every interview you go on, every time you're networking with a potential employer, you're trying to sell yourself. So sometimes you don't even know. You're trying to, you're selling yourself or you're selling a product, uh, even facility management. So I did in college, I um, did a couple of days with a sport tourism office and their job basically was to try and get uh, sporting events to a certain area. So even they're selling and it's, it's everywhere and it's, people are just going to have to, you know, whether you like it or not, you're going to need sales experience to be not only in the sports world, but even in the whole business world. And last but not least, Julia. Thanks. Um, I have to agree with Tom. I remember us doing like role play in the classroom with selling. And I was, I wish that I could just become invisible and not have to participate. It was so, so scary. And now that's literally what I do. I talk to people all day long, every single day. So don't be scared. Um, just be comfortable being uncomfortable. But anyway, um, I remember so many people coming into my classrooms and just saying, if you want to make it in sports, you have to work really, really hard. Um, and that is something that is definitely rung true. 
if you want to stand out, you have to be working super hard. Sometimes that means working longer hours than you're supposed to. Um, and just making sure that your productivity is, is super high. That's how you're going to stand out. And similar to what Courtney said, it's just doing the little things right. That means like being five to 15 minutes early for work, making sure that you're ready to go at the start of your day, not, you know, coming in a couple minutes late, making sure that you're dressing so cliche, but dress for the job that you want. Um, that's something that like has always stuck with me too, to make sure that you're presenting yourself in the best way possible, because you never know who's going to walk into your office one day or the other, depending on where you work, you may see the president of your company every day, or you may see them once, once a year. Like, what are you going to look like when you, when you meet that person who's really, really important? Um, so I think those are some of the things that stuck with me is just always make sure you're working really hard to get to that next spot and make sure that you do all the little things right. All right. Awesome. So our next question is going to be, this is more directed towards Tom and Marissa because they both graduated in 2020. And that's obviously, as we all know, when the COVID-19 pandemic just kind of stormed in and threw a wrench in everybody's plans. So Tom and Marissa, how did the COVID-19 pandemic impact your guys' job search? And also everyone else on this panel too, you guys can kind of chime in and talk about how um, COVID-19 may have impacted, you know, your, like your current positions and like your jobs and everything that kind of went on with that. So uh, Tom, we'll start out with you. Uh, yeah. So it didn't really affect my job search. Um, I knew probably midway through my senior year, I was going to get a job with choice sports cards where I am now. Um, as, so as soon as I graduated, I thought I was going to get this big raise. Um, I was going to be in a sales position, you know, the whole nine yards, which I mean, I am now, but it didn't start that way. Um, pretty much. Um, I started off laid off. Our company was down for three months. We laid everybody off. Um, about June 1st, we came back and we were literally, I mean, me and my boss were going door to door. I mean, we do trading cards for even police departments. We were going door to door in police departments and southeastern Pennsylvania trying to get some sort of business because our uh, our PPP money was running out um, I thought I thought I was going to get laid off again um, I started working you know doing like the bare bones stuff in the jobs like intern work and you know it was hard like it's it's hard mentally and eventually you know things worked out the trading card market started booming and you know I I got what I wanted now um, but the advice I would give is just you know, some people aren't hiring now. So I would try and make some connections when you can now. So when people are hiring, you're the first person on their list and you're really going to have to, you know, suck it up and do some of the bare bones things that a company asks you to do just to kind of stay on their radar. So when they do have the money to, you know, bounce back from the pandemic and be able to give you more responsibility, give you more money and all of that, um, you know, you'll stand out and you'll get what you want. Um, people also have to realize there's a lot of people laid off now who have a lot more experience. So what are you going to do to really make yourself show, you know, show out? Um, you know, obviously someone who's been in the industry for 25 years and someone just getting out of college, that 25 years experience goes a long way. So what can you do still in college to uh, boost your resume, to have your resume be you know, comparable to someone with 25 years experience. All right, Marissa. Yeah, so similar to Tom, I kind of already had a position lined up with Perfect Game, but of course, like the pandemic just brought so much uncertainty in like so many different areas and aspects. So um, I wasn't really sure like what was going to happen with that, if we would even have like a baseball season that year, um, if I would even have a job or whatnot. So the uncertainty was definitely like a scary time. But um, like Tom said, yeah, we're still in uncertain times. So it's still hard. Like people are still laid off and whatnot. But my biggest piece of advice is be patient, but also don't stop doing what you're doing. So like continue to do like those volunteer experiences, the, um, you know, the, the internship, internship, like work, like Tom was mentioning, like, it's, it's not always fun. It's not always glamorous, but that is the stuff that'll make you stand out. And that'll, 
that is the stuff that like helps you gain like skills and everything in the meantime. So it definitely um, is beneficial in the long run. And that is my advice. Awesome. So does, do any of our other panelists have any input kind of on that, anything, you know, how it impacted their jobs or like kind of like their observations, what they saw throughout this whole COVID-19 experience? Um, I can go. Um, for the golf industry itself, it kind of helped our industry a lot. Um, people, couldn't do anything. So they were golfing. And um, although those first couple of months, we were kind of trying to figure out what would work um, and, and kind of being creative, we were able to figure out some solutions as other people were able to as well. So my advice for people that are coming into the job industry now and in this unprecedented times that figure out solutions for companies, figure out how they can thrive and be successful in these types of environments, because um, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for if another pandemic comes out or not a pandemic, but another crazy disease comes out, what is the solution for it? How can we still be successful? How can we develop um, some kind of creative idea to make sure that we are staying alive and that we're not able to um, stop what we're doing. So just be creative. And um, I loved what Tom had to say that there's a lot of people that are being laid off and they have tons of experience, but people want young people who are going to come up with different ideas and um, able to just bring something different to the table that maybe the person that was laid off, unfortunately, um, doesn't have that because they're so used to what was before. I just want to piggyback off that real quick. So we, uh, my company is the official trading card licensee for minor league baseball. And what we're seeing um, with the, um, you know, with minor league baseball resuming this summer is a lot of these minor league baseball teams want to hire younger people because they're more driven. They're willing to do, you know, the internship work, the bare bones work that someone with, 25 years experience might, might not want to do. So that is really a key way to stand out and get hired now. Yeah, I'll echo what Tom said. Uh, so PPR, Philip Parks and Rec, got, uh, kind of had two different phases in the pandemic. At first, they sent us all to a warehouse and we were packaging food uh, and carrying these boxes that weighed tons over different parts of the warehouse to and these foods were going out to families in need so that was rough that was not what i signed up for when i became a rec leader i didn't want to work in a warehouse all day lugging boxes of food around but i was happy enough to have a job and to be continued to get paid and then after summer once the school year hit they uh they had us serving as access centers so we were a hub for students who didn't have wi-fi or didn't have computers to come to these rec centers and do their online school. And so it was an experience in itself. That's something Parks and Rec never did before. So having these students come into our centers and learn how to help these kindergartners who have never been in school before, pay attention to class while making sure the eighth graders that are getting ready to graduate aren't slacking off. It was an interesting experience, but uh, I think uh, overall it really made the shitty city look good. and. Uh, helped us learn new experiences. I was just gonna share a quick story. Um, I had a pretty unique 2020. Um, I was actually unemployed for majority of the year um, and that was really, really tough. Um, but I'm telling the story because it has a lot to do about keeping in touch with people and connections. Um, so when I graduated, I worked for the union from 2016 to 2018. And then I went to work um, at the University of Pennsylvania. So I um, stopped working at Penn um, in, I don't know, April of 2020. Um, and throughout those literally like two years that I wasn't working at the union, I had always kept in touch with my boss that is still my boss now. Um, 
we were friendly and I, I know his family a little bit as well. So I actually ended up babysitting for them throughout 2020, which I, I would have never happened. Um, and we had talked about me coming back to the union throughout the year. So literally from April of 2020 until February of 2021, I had just continuously talked to him about coming back to the union. And then I was finally able to start again on February 1st. So like that was a long, long, long term relationship, like working at this constantly. And I, I mean, I like him on a personal level, too. It wasn't like it was just professionally driven, but um, just to like emphasize how important it is to keep in touch with people and make sure that you're always having strong connections because it ended up getting me um, a really great position that I love and being employed again after almost an entire year without employment. So um, definitely keep in touch with, with those types of people. I don't know how I can follow that story because that is, that is amazing. Um, but just, uh, to, I guess, continue it. Um, I was also affected by the pandemic. Um, so I was, for, I'm, I was lucky to continue to get paid, you know, by the Eagles, even when, you know, I was working from home the entire time which is a, you know, which is a blessing. But uh, I was also at the time working before the pandemic started working part-time at the University of Penn and the athletic department, um, just kind of as like a, you know, supervising the athletic facilities at night. Um, and part of the reason I took that job was just to kind of get my foot in the door in collegiate sports, because that's, you know, where I ultimately want to end up. Um, so it was just another stepping stone. Um, and that's where, you know, that's where I was hoping it would lead. But once the pandemic happened, obviously, Ivy Leagues and Julia, you obviously know Ivy League said, we're done with sports. We're not even going to try. So that kind of just took that job away. Uh, but what I will say to that, you know, I could have just sat home and, you know, I'm in facilities, so it's not much working from home I can do. So I could have just sat home and did absolutely nothing, you know, while collecting a paycheck. Uh, but what I decided to do was take advantage of that time and reach out to add different athletic directors. So I put a list together of college athletic directors, high school athletic directors, and I just reached out to each one, LinkedIn, emails, uh, I tried to set up Zoom calls and just reached out to as many as I could. Like I said, had talked to them. And now I've built relationships with those athletic directors who like to and bring it back to what Tom said, you know, like, and, you know, in a year or two, you know, like these, there's going to be people that have more experience than me in collegiate sports, right. That are going to be trying to go for that same job that I'm going for. But if I'm creating that relationship, you know, like Dr. J all, you know, always said is not who, you know, is who knows you, you know, that person can then reach out to, you know, if a job opens up, that person can reach out to me and, it just, it just showed me and it taught me, and this is, you know, for a lot of, you know, any students that's listening, like the, the grind just never stops. Like whatever goals you have, you know, obviously sometimes you gotta be patient and wait, but you know, you can, there's still things you can do to get to, you know, to get to where you wanna get. Um, so that's, once again, couldn't top with, you know, Julia's story, cause that was just amazing. But I just wanted to add that at the end. So we have a question from one of the people in the chat. This is from Adam and Darian, since you ended that last one, we're going to come right back at you. So you're nice and fresh with this answer. Uh, <laughs> what were some of the most challenging parts when transitioning from college to a career in sports after graduation? Oof. Wow. Big hmm. question. Yeah. Cause <laughs> I looked, I looked over the questions before we started this, but now it's, it's kind of, kind of put me on a the spot there. Um, the biggest thing, honestly, um, I don't, I can't speak for everybody else. It was more just for me, it was just adjusting, uh, to my, uh, specific department. Um, you know, that they have a way of doing things and, um, it was just different for me because, you know, I, we were taught a certain way and, you know, other internships I did, they did things their way. So I guess it was more just like adapting to the office. That was like the biggest thing for me, adapting to, you know, new personalities. You know, you spend four years or in my case, five years 
and you know in college and you know you're just used to the people around you you obviously you know like you guys are going through it now like where you start with people in fresh your freshman year you know you know sophomore year junior year senior year you know etc and you've been with that person for over four years so you know that person you know how like you know they respond to certain you know certain things and uh for me it was just it was brand new you know it was brand new and i just had to learn i guess to kind of be a, a chameleon in a way and like adjust to how they did things you know how you know how my senior vice presidents like things to be presented to them how my manager you know likes to attack a day you know when we have you know multiple you know events going on so i guess just adapting was honestly the biggest thing for me yeah uh, we can go to courtney next and then after that you guys can just chime in um wherever you see fit but courtney if you want to take it away now um, for me, it was a, what Darius said, kind of adapting. Um, I was so used to being an athlete and then in school, people are telling you what to do or like you have to be at school and at class at this time and, and you have practice at this time. So you have a set schedule, um, but no one's setting your schedule after that. I mean, you have to be at work 8.30 to 5, but you got to figure out when you're going to get everything done um, and set your own schedule and kind of figure it out. So um, going from everyone telling you or, or having a set schedule, I keep saying that, but um, a routine of everything and then making your own routine was definitely a huge transition for me. And I'm still getting used to it um, three years out. It's, it's been difficult, but you get the hang of it eventually and you get to the gym eventually. <laughs> I'll follow up on Courtney's. Uh, I think what Darian hit on was really good. It's uh, in college, you have that support system. You have your friends, you know, you have those people who you turn to at 12 o'clock at night when you're cramming an assignment that you forgot to do. Uh, I was always calling Courtney up to bug her about something I had to get done, or she was complaining to me about 460 or something like that. Or, you know, being able to walk into Dr. Langello's office or Caleb's office and just sit down and talk about class, talk about jobs, talk about internships. You can't really walk into your manager's office in the middle of the workday and be like, hey, what's going on? How are you doing? So it, it's an adjustment in the fact that you don't have that support system and you don't have that, that outlet. Uh, but like Courtney said, you, you figure it out. You find ways to go to the gym. You you just, it's just an adjustment that you got to kind of get used to baby steps. Um, just really quickly, uh, when you guys were talking about it, it made me think like when you start working, you're, you're like a freshman again. Like you're, when you're a freshman in college, you're getting, you, you're meeting everyone, like you're getting settled in then you're a senior, you're a season, like you're just rolling. And then you get to this workplace and it's like, oh, like I'm the newbie, I'm the freshman again. So my advice would be if people invite you out to a happy hour, if they invite you out on the weekend, if they invite you to do something, go and do it because you just need those little experiences to get to know the people that you work with. And it makes your workplace and your work day so much more comfortable. Um, and then you easily make those connections where you can lean on people and you can ask questions and, and ask for help. So that's that'd be my advice. Yeah, I'd like to piggyback off Courtney. I think she was pretty spot on. Um, I think the biggest adjustments just kind of life of being an adult. Um, honestly, you know, it's a lot different than being in school. You know, school, you have to go, you go to class, you know, you have, you might have a part-time job here or there. Now it's like, you know, you, you have a, you have set expectations from you at work. You know, you're not, you know, working at, like I used to work at Acne. You're not just checking people out. You, you have a lot of responsibility and, you know, sometimes, you know, you'll go home and you'll be off the clock and, you know, sometimes clients will still be calling me at seven o'clock at night because they're on the West coast and it's four o'clock there. So it really never stops. And, you know, it's taken me, it's, I'm, I mean, I'm still getting used to it. Um, it definitely is an adjustment. I'm probably going to be adjusting to it for a while, but it, it is a lot, it's a lot different than being in school and, you know, I've enjoyed it. Um, it, it really just, you know, the next phase of life. All right. So I know this is, we're, we're all getting older every single day, but 
if you could go back and give your freshman self a piece of advice, I mean, what would that be? And we could start off with um, Courtney. Why not? Um, freshman piece of advice, I would probably say um, Newman is not your only source of networking. Um, I felt like I got stuck in a bubble almost when I was at Newman and I um, was relying on the people at Newman. And then when I got into, and I, I was very confident in myself and um, in my position at Newman, people knew me, people knew who I, well, just knew who I was and was aware of me because it's so small. And when I got into the sports industry, I was just a small little fish in a very big ocean. So um, no one knows you. You kind of have to make yourself known. And, and like everyone had said, you're just a freshman again. Um, and it's really difficult. So I would just tell myself that um, you need to reach out to more than just what you're comfortable with and really just put yourself in uncomfortable positions, even if it makes you very sweaty and um, very nervous and you can't really put your words together, put yourself in those positions because they will help you in the long run um, and you'll get a handle on everything eventually. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's go to Darian and then whoever wants to chime in can chime in after. When I say this, I mean this. I would not change a single thing. That's, I would just tell, I would tell my younger self, enjoy the ride. That's literally what I would tell myself. Because for me, everything that's happened in the journey for me has made me, hopefully, the man that I think, you know, the good man that I think I am today and the good professional that I think I am today, sports professional that I think I am today. But, I, you know, I... I thought about this question. I honestly, I thought like, oh, maybe just start in sport management instead of athletic training and wasting, you know, two years of my life. But, you know, that was a part of the story and that was a part of the journey. And, you know, our journeys, you want to be able to look back and say, okay, this, you know, that journey led me to who I am today. And honestly, like I said, I just wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, I'll go. Um, it's kind of a funny story that, ends up being advice when I was I guess a junior I got offered an internship with Citizens Bank and I almost turned it down because I said well I'm working in sports I want to work in sports I don't want to work for a bank uh, I came to find out that the internship was corporate affairs I was I was pretty much working for the Phillies but as an employee of Citizens Bank and it I wound up spending two years there and it was the best internship I ever had so Explore all areas of the industry. If you go in as a freshman saying, I want to be an athletic director, that's great. But look at the other opportunities. Look at marketing. Look at corporate sponsorship. Look at sales. Look at everything. Don't ever turn anything down because even if you do wind up being an athletic director, you may need sales. You may need corporate sponsorship. So learn all aspects of the industry. And that way, if you wind up not wanting to be an athletic director and not wanting to do corporate partnerships. You have those internships, you have those experiences to fall back on. So take opportunities to learn, network, and just learn any chance you get. I can jump in real quick. Um, just a mixture of basically what Matt and Courtney said. Um, step out of your comfort zone and take any opportunity that comes your way, even if you know, you feel awkward going to network with a random stranger, like don't feel awkward. You have to step out of your comfort zone, um, make yourself comfortable and just do whatever you possibly can to step out of there. Like I'm the type of person that stresses about every little thing. I, I will stress about, well, what is the parking situation going to be like when I get there? Like, where am I going to park my car? What door do I go in? Like, I don't know any of this stuff, but um, trust me, you will make yourself uncomfortable in those uncomfortable situations and you will figure it out. It'll all come together. And it really, it'll just become natural to you at that point. And you have to step out of your comfort zone and just do those uncomfortable things. And it really goes a long way. funny story um it'll be quick I promise but it's laugh at yourself like we're all talking about how you get sweaty when you like go to talk to someone you're nervous 
the first job interview that I went on, I was sitting basically in the middle of this sales office and I was filling out paperwork. Um, I couldn't remember a certain address. So I went to pull out my phone um, and somehow I turned on the music on my phone and Justin Bieber baby started playing in front of the entire office um, blasting. And I, I couldn't, the app wasn't open, so I couldn't just swipe out of it. I couldn't, oh, it was a mess. It, it went on probably for almost the entire song. And then I literally looked around and everyone is just laughing and they're like, oh, I'm a Bieber fan. Don't wear it. Like, you have to laugh at yourself. Things like that are going to happen. You can't be perfect. Like every single time you try to do something. So be able to laugh at yourself when, when things like that happen, hopefully it doesn't happen to anybody else, but um, yeah, just, just roll with it. Like, like Darian said, go with the flow. I actually have two of them. One is just be yourself. Um, I kind of have this, you know, speak your mind, you know, funny personality. And honestly, it helped me get the job that I have. You know, if I was just quiet all the time and, you know, wasn't myself, I might not have the job that I had. Um, just a lot of it's just being comfortable in your own skin. And there's an employer for everybody, you know, no matter what kind of personality you have. So once you're comfortable in your own skin, it really makes you go a long way. All right, everyone, we are just about out of time. So I just wanted to thank all of the panelists here today, Tom, Courtney, Darian, Marissa, Matt, and um, Julia. It was a really, really great session. I've certainly learned a lot from you guys, and I know for a fact that the other people in attendance did as well. And honestly, this is a really special panel because, you know, this is, you know, this event, this night around the clock is 460 event. All of you guys were once in this position and it's really cool to be able to, you know, connect with, you know, Newman alumni and share this experience with you guys because you've been here before. And it makes me wish that I am hopefully in your guys' position one day. And it makes me realize how special it is to give back to the um, classes below you. So again, thank you guys so much. Everything was great. And also thank you to my co-hosts, Tommy and Zach. You guys are all awesome. So yeah, this was really great. But um, I guess that's it. We're wrapping it up. So thanks again, guys. Yeah, thank we- you, guys. You guys did a great job. Uh, for those people still on the call, reach out. Reach out to myself. I'm sure all the other panels will say the same thing. Reach out, make connections, ask questions. I'm always willing to take a phone call or or chat over text. Just reach out. You never know when you'll need a a friend. Yeah. Thanks again, guys. Same with Matt. You you guys did great. Um, Any students in the panel, um, you know, reach out to me on social media. I'm willing to help give advice to anybody. Um, Nobody's, you know, nobody's uh, path is perfect. So I'm willing to help anybody through anything. Uh, all you got to do is DM me on Twitter or message me on LinkedIn. I'll add to that. Um, just want uh, and reach, feel free to reach out. Like the guys are saying LinkedIn. Uh, if you get my number or whatever, you know, email from, you know, uh, a mutual friend, that's fine. But I guess the one thing, just real quick, I just want to sneak in there um, to leave with you guys. And I'm pretty sure I just got heard this from Dr. J or Caleb but it, it still sticks with me to this day. Like, just know your why. Always know your why. Um, a question I've constantly been just asking myself every single day for the last year is like, what do I want my impact to be? Like, at the end of all of this. And I honestly, like, I believe, like, there's, it's never too early to think of that. So, like, as you guys are coming up and trying to figure out what the next step in life is, just think of that question because think about what, Think about what this is going to mean for you at the end of the day. Think about uh, what you're going to take with this next journey in your life and what is going to lead to, you know, down the line. So just that little gem I wanted to leave with you guys. I saw. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate you guys coming out. And thank you for showing us all the support that you guys give us. 
especially with all the advice. And Dr. J can attest to that. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Great work, 460. Proud of awesome. you guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks Thank for coming you. on. Yeah.